Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Schneider Electric PSA Trading Tutorials where you will learn Schneider Electric PSA Programming. So let's see what we shall cover in this presentation. In this presentation we are going to cover the PLC structure type, also called a struct, so we understand what a struct is, how to use structures and how they are being created and then we are going to look at a use case application of structures. So what is structure or struct? A struct is actually a data type. So just like arrays, they are compound data types or derived data types. They are used to group data of one or more types. So like in the case of arrays where we group data of similar data types, with structures we can form a class of different data types where they have different, different properties. So the structure data type represents data which is made up of elements of different types. Okay, so for example, let's consider that we have an industrial plant where we are running several motors. Those motors have different parameters, like for example, they have there is a motor temperature, there is motor speed, there is motor direction, there is motor voltage. And if we have to define distinctly each variable for each motor in the industrial plant, we are going to define a lot of variables of which modification and maintenance becomes very difficult. So in such a case, we create a data block. And in that data block, we are now able to manage all the parameters that a motor can, which a motor can have. Like for example, the current speed of the motor, the preset speed of the motor, the voltage of the motor, the temperature of the motor, if there are some alarms based on some faults of the motor or if some conditions are different. So we should note that in, an, in, in a structured data type, when we want to access a structure, we use the structured name, that is the name of the structure, the parent name, dot the component. So we use a dot operator to access a component. For example, if the structure name is motor and we want to access the current speed value, then we are going to call motor dot current speed value to read or access that value. So what are some of the importance of structures? So we use structure to summarize parameters of a certain subsystem into a single data block. So that subsystem may have some set points, it may have some speed, it may have some rotational direction, it may have some temperature. If in that case that subsystem is a motor. And also, while using structures, if we happen to make modification at the structure level, it affects all the parameters or it affects all the subsystems automatically that are using that structure type. Okay, so we are not going to move individually to make adjustment or modification. The modification is automatically transferred to the, the rest of the other subsystems using the same type. Okay, now we are going to demonstrate it using a software example. Okay, so this is our software example. Now we want to create a, a structure of type motor. Okay, and we know that motor have different parameters. So we are going to start by creating motor. We are going to go to variables and instances or function blocks. So we'll go to derive data type just like arrays. So I will call this motor, for example, so I will give it a, a capital case. Okay, so do you want to make modification here? So it is already chosen structure. So in the previous lesson, we talked about arrays where we selected an array. Now we are working with structures. So we are going to select structure. Okay, so we now we are now going to start populating the structure type. So the first parameter that we want is the, the speed. Okay, for example, we have the set point speed. Let's say set, set point speed. And it is a real type, so I will change this to real. And then we now have current speed. Have temperature. I'll just call it temp. It's also real. We have voltage.
we have alarm okay the alarm now is boolean so it is it is bool all right so those are the parameters that we are going to manage for now i'll analyze the project i'll go to a variable so our variables i'll create an instance of moto so i will just call this moto one it has created an instance of that moto and if i drop it down i'm going to see all the parameters of that moto that we we just created so for the set point speed we are going to give it for example you can say the set point speed is 1500 revolutions per minute okay, so that's our set point speed and now we are going to monitor what we are going to do is we're going to monitor these parameters and when any of them default the setting condition that we will set is the default then the alarm should come on so i will go to my application now which i've already created so i will drop a less than or rather greater than block so i'll drop the greater than block so i will drop three greater than block three so the first block will check for the voltage so the first block will check for the voltage so we we'll check if the voltage if the voltage is greater than for example let's say the line voltage if it is greater than 400 We check next is we check now the speed the current speed if the current speed is greater than the set speed then one is to go high next we we'll check if the temperature is greater than for example say 80 degrees we want to set this high now we are going to place a condition which will trigger the evaluation of those operations so I'll call this condition monitor. We'll give it the extended Boolean. Okay, so this okay, so when that condition is true, then those blocks start their evaluation. And if any of the evaluation becomes true, we want this alarm to come on. I will set this to the alarm. I will browse for the alarm. Good. So now we have created one moto. We can as well create another moto, say moto 2. And Moto2 will also have all those same parameters. Moto3 and Moto3 will also have all these parameters. Okay, so we just have to create the instance of that type and then all these are created with it. So we are just going to experiment with one Moto. So now let's build our project. And we are going to connect to our PLC and we are going to transfer the program to the PLC. We want to run after we transfer.
all right so the monitor is not yet triggered so let's say i want to modify it let's say modify value so modify the value to one if it is true but now all these conditions are false that's why our alarm is not yet on so notice how the alarm parameter has been access it is moved to one dot okay just like i said in the presentation now let's say that the voltage go beyond 400 let's say it goes to 420 now you see the alarm is triggered okay so this can now call for alerts so it goes to say 1420 okay let me bring it down to 300 okay 200 condition is still false so let's test the speed let's say the speed goes to 200 revolutions per minute 2000 revolutions per minute then the alarm is triggered but if the speed is operating at 900, then the alarm is not triggered. And now the temperature, so if the temperature goes to say 100, then the alarm should be triggered. Okay, the alarm is triggered and if the temperature is operating at some safe, at some safe temperature value, let's say 50 degrees, then the alarm goes off okay so these have saved us a lot of work from creating several variables because here we would have created how many variables one two three four five variables five variables five variables five variables so we would have had up to about 15 variables but here we just have to create three instances and assume all the, the variable types all right so I hope that was easy to understand. Let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the presentation. All right, so here we have understood what the structure is. We have seen how we can create a structure. We have seen how we can create and use a structure. And we have also seen an application scenario of a structure. Okay. And we have also seen the use case of a structure. All right, so this brings us to the end of this presentation. In the next presentation, we are going to look at derived functions and function blocks, which they call DFBs. So thank you very much for watching. Please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe. So if you didn't understand anything in this video, please. Do well to keep it in the comment section below and I will do my possible best to review it. So thanks once more and see you in the next video.